Okay. Here, here you are. I just want to see if when I put it in. Oh yeah, so I can't really. I can't see presentation mode. Yeah. the 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 point is, you have a delay of about twenty seconds between um, the Streamyard and the Venueless. So now you could see it on Venueless as well. Menuless. What is that? <laughs> uh, I. That's uh, that's the other system where the um, the audience listens to your talk. Uh, the streamyard is just you talk in streamyard, and oh, uh, we see. stream it. We stream it live on. Uh, but but you're on stage. I can see you. So it's on the stream. Everything is perfect. Okay. And uh, so we have uh, four minutes to go. And uh, yeah, before I go. I will introduce you shortly to to hopefully a lot of people being there, <laughs> and then you you better switch on your camera. Not now, but in for yeah. Okay. I can see you. Perfect. It rained today on the money. Oh, well, I'm sure it'll be offset by lots of nice days. <laughs> first first rain, I think, since five months, but it was huge rain. <laughs> Wow. Yeah, yeah, so is it it's what middle of the night there? It's uh 2227. Right. Okay. You 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 you're sitting where? I'm in California. Ah, okay. So not not Greece time. It's uh... <laughs> No, much different time zone. <laughs> but you have a Greek email address, huh? Right? Yeah, no, I just moved back to the US mm. from Greece. Um so yeah, so I lived there for two and a half years, but I'm still doing work with my Greeks. Um, so, yeah. Great people. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. So for me, it's it's already beer time. <laughs> yeah, but it's like dinner time for them there, basically. Yeah, I'm just going to ask if uh, people can maybe show up in the chat. Give me a second. I have a Greek Greek keyboard. That's great. <laughs> so do you speak Greek? Lijo. Uh, <laughs> Lijo. Um, Ego. Uh, yeah, I, I, Ego, I learn it. Yeah, the problem is I, I learned it for uh, via Duolingo for about two years now, but I just started the course and it's really hard. I, I understand a lot, but uh, uh, speaking is really hard. Yeah. Um, but I get really used to the language and um, being here now for four days, I guess, about that. And um, yeah. The point is, we don't see uh, if how many people are out there. Oh, Eric asks. Yes, I'm smoking. Sorry, it's late here. It's it's eleven. So. Yeah, Gonzalo says it's also being <laughs> broadcast. <laughs> <laughs> I switch just switch off my camera. Nobody sees <laughs> what I'm doing here. I have a couple of. Uh, uh, friends here already and uh, on Friday the whole company will come down so we have a company retreat okay somebody told me to start yeah it's right it's time it's uh, 2029 I just wait for my clock okay so welcome everybody thanks Paula for um, reminding me to start and to stop conservation this is the last talk on this uh, session tonight. It's really a pity because it's really been a, 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 night, uh, a nice session up now. And um, at last speaker, I'm introducing you, Jennifer Bailey. And uh, yeah, Jennifer will um, talk about um, cultural, he cultural heritage, connecting factor between geo and engagement uh, properties. And um, Jennifer is uh, a research fellow at the National Observatory of Athens in Greece, but you're not here anymore. So you're in California back, I heard recently. 
but uh, you do a lot of work in uh, climate science and policy and currently you're at global health health phd student at the university of california so i guess you have kind of the time delay to me but not to the audience so um yeah i would say it's uh, it's your stage now and i will disappear and yeah we are happy to hear you talk now great thank you so much um Yes, so as Till said, um, I'm kind of between the National Observatory of Athens um, and the University of California, San Diego now. Um, but at the Observatory of Athens, um, a lot of my work is through the Greek Group on Earth Observations Office. So I'll talk a little bit about um, that today um, and specifically looking at um, cultural heritage, but also urban heritage. So Earth observation data um, is really becoming increasingly instrumental for environmental monitoring in general, but it also holds a lot of opportunities for the domain of cultural heritage as um, monuments and sites are endangered and threatened by both anthropogenic and nat natural threats. Um, so earthquakes, fires, urbanizations, et cetera. And this space is really starting to be explored. Um, you can see kind of EO's opportunities in this domain because there are a lot of projects coming up and applications um, aimed at providing products tailored to the needs of cultural heritage. So examples of useful EO-based products include um, land use change maps, uh, ground motion detection, risk assessment maps, um, archaeological sites monitoring and identification, so identifying buried sites, for example, um, monitoring of the destru destruction and looting of sites, um, and then also looking at different climate change in indicators like monitoring of air pollution, um, monitoring of coastlines, so erosion. Um, and EO really allows for kind of the systematic systematic data and information gathering approach from large areas and also kind of can fill the gaps in areas which don't have monitoring systems or the ability to kind of address this um, and look at cultural heritage using EO data. Um, it also addresses frequency issues and allows for um, timeliness of data acquisition, which is really important when you want to look at cultural heritage over time. Um, and maybe more granularly. So instead of looking at kind of this um, invisible sort of perspective, zooming in and being able to see different aspects of the urban fabric, which might include cultural heritage. Um, and also as a part of this, EO can really kind of inform policymaking. So start to feed um, aspects of cultural heritage into larger, maybe environmental policymaking frames. Um, and I think one of the most interesting aspects too is that EO can really kind of enhance public awareness. Um, there's an opportunity to kind of pull on um, sort of the heartstrings of the public when you're looking and talking about cultural heritage. So helping kind of bring the need for um, preservation and conservation and um, effective management to the public's eye can kind of also influence, um, you know, the, the ability of us for us to look at cultural heritage more seriously. So since EO holds opportunities in this domain um, and cultural heritage is threatened um, sort of by these different climate change um, impacts, we um, together, the Greek Geo Office with UNESCO's World Heritage Center and um, the Group on Earth Observation Secretariat recently launched this community activity, which we call Urban Heritage Climate Observatory or UCO for short. Um, so it was launched in April of this year with um, a public facing event, which um, is available online and highlight documents are also available online um, and also a private meeting of kind of this consortium, which is the, the community activity. Um, and really the goal is to kind of integrate urban, urban heritage um, and climate change impacts on urban heritage using earth observation into GEO's work program. Um, so I'm not sure how many of you are familiar with the Group on Earth Observations, um, but it really is this unique sort of global network connecting all these different types of institutions, um, government, sort of research, data providers, businesses, you know, private sector, scientists, et cetera, all these experts to kind of address um, 
GEO's vision and goals, which centers around sort of engagement priorities, looking at um, urbanization, climate change, disaster risk reduction, um, sustainable development. So GEO really kind of coordinates um, their community to respond to, to use earth observation to kind of supplement data, help countries respond to, um, you know, policy and reporting mechanisms. Um, and the GEO work program is really the primary instrument to facilitate the collaboration among members, participating organizations, associates, and partners to kind of, you know, move forward their vision and goals. Um, and so this really ranges from uh, communities of practice, early stage project projects and pilots, and also includes well-established services. Um, but there's also um, an entry point for new activities. So the GEO community activities, which UCO falls under, um, which kind of, which may go on to become initiatives or even flagships, um, but it offers an opportunity to kind of um, begin to collaborate um, and contribute with minimal requirements um, and minimal structure as well. So kind of beginning the conversation um, and bringing together a community to kind of address, you know, different aspects of, you know, GEO's goals through this contributing to the work program. So the Urban Heritage Climate Observatory is a community activity within GEO's 2020 to 2022 work program. And so in sort of conceptualizing UCO and working together with different partners, um, we kind of realized that this can be um, sort of a vehicle bringing together the different engagement priorities of GEO as it kind of operates on the, the common ground of urban resilience, climate action, sustainable development, and disaster risk reduction. Um, so it really kind of cuts across all four of GEO's engagement priorities. So there's three established priorities based off of sustainable development agenda, the Paris Agreement, and the Sendai Framework for Disaster Risk Reduction. And then in November, um, a fourth engagement priority around the new urban agenda focusing on urban resilience, resilient cities, and human settlements will be formally adopted in November at um, GEO's plenary. Um, but yeah, so kind of the whole effort of UCO is to use earth observation um, data to address climate change impacts on urban heritage, looking specifically at world um, heritage cities. And um, by kind of integrating these aspects into GEO's work program, we hope that we can kind of bring together these four different um, sort of engagement priorities as UCO brings together these different domains and tries to connect the dots. Um, so some connections need to be made in terms of the urgency of um, and eventual impacts of climate change um, with the importance and the, especially the vulnerability of urban heritage and also the untapped but increasingly acknowledged potential of earth observation in relation to both of these concerns. So UCO aims to really be um, a forum to bring together experts and stakeholders in these domains and kind of determine, um, you know, what the needs are, uh, what the aims are, avoid overlapping in the different domains, and then kind of exploit these synergies to produce tangible outcomes, all with the aim of protecting urban heritage um, from climate change impacts via Earth observation. And so just really quickly um, to kind of describe the structure. Um, the established partnership between UNESCO World Heritage Center, the Greek GEO office, and um, GEO have kind of formulated a steering committee, which is eight entities, um, basically just to kind of serve as a core group and um, design strategic priorities for UCO, overlook the implementation of um, these decided activities. And it's co-chaired by UNESCO's World Heritage Center and the Greek GEO office. Um, and mainly will operate through working groups. So the structure is very loose, but um, that's kind of how we plan to move forward this, you know, aim of producing some tangible outcomes. Um, and yeah, we expect to meet once a year. We launched in April, so it's still, you know, in the very beginning stages, but um, really trying to bring together the community, um, the geo community, as well as externals too, to get people interested and involved um, in this area. So the response from the GEO community was actually really quite amazing. So um, we had, you know, very positive responses. We have 75 organizations 
um, from 24 participating countries. And um, it's really just a wide array of expertise. We have climate change experts, um, you know, uh, cultural heritage experts, uh, EO experts really trying to like build the consortium to help us sort of deliver on, um, on this community activity. Uh, Jennifer, sorry to to come in, but uh, do you do you change your slides? Because obviously uh, we, oh. we just see the first slide in the moment. Oh no! <laughs> yes, okay. I do. Um, can you see them? Oh no, I've been changing them. Sorry about that. No, no, maybe it's not your fault, but uh, I don't know. Um, yeah, but now I see your new slide on the on the screen. Okay. It, it takes it takes a while. Sorry to inter to come no. in. I didn't want to disturb you. <laughs> no worries. Um, yeah, so I'll just. I'm. I mean, I'm sure these slides will maybe be available after. But um, there's some links you can look at. Uko, are you seeing what I'm changing now? It. <laughs> It's it's now working. Now we see the objective slide. Right. Perfect. Thank okay. you. Sorry. No, no worries. Um, yeah, so if we're on the objective slide. Yes. So just briefly, these are like laid out. We have an engagement plan, which, you know, lays things out. But one of our main objectives is kind of exploiting EO and open Earth observation data where possible to um, really enrich and modernize processes for the preservation, monitoring, and management of urban heritage, um, and really want to use a bottom-up approach to kind of inform global decisions in this area, but also kind of develop a global service that can then assist local practitioners. So kind of moving, you know, from bottom up and top down as well to kind of tackle climate change impacts on urban heritage. And like I mentioned before, um, really kind of leaning on this communication advocacy piece around climate action um, to try and move forward um, sort of protection uh, practices on cultural heritage. Um, are you able to see this new slide now? Um, I hope so. <laughs> um, but I've laid out kind of the planned activities here. And we are, we are, I, I still see also on the stream yard, I still see the objective slide. Okay, maybe yeah, if I that, just do it this way. Does yeah, that work? Yeah, Can probably it's probably it's better. Probably it's better because uh it, it takes a while because we have a time delay between the um stream yard and the other one. But I, I'm sure it works now. Sorry to come okay. in again. I'm no worries. Um, okay, so as long as you can see this decently. Um, but yeah, just briefly to go over kind of the planned activities, um, just to explain kind of um, what we hope to do in the next few years. Um, really building off this partnership between GEO and UNESCO, um, we've developed an implementation plan, we've launched the community activity, and we're currently um, looking at these items in red. So we want to define these working groups and actions. We want to collect um, needs. So what are the urban heritage needs around the world and within our consortium in relation to climate change? Uh, what EO data exists? So really leaning on our EO data experts in the consortium there. And then kind of what are the global good practices? Um, and as part of this, we'll launch a survey to, to gather this information, but also to help us in identifying um, pilot sites that could be um, you know, good places to kind of test out this idea of building a, um, a sort of global service using EO for climate change impacts on urban heritage. Um, and then moving into the future, we really want to kind of build off of the existing indicators that exist, but build a, a specific climate change risk indicator set um, for urban heritage, initiate and implement these pilot um, pilot cases and sites, and then help help it feed this global platform. Um, so here I've kind of only shown two of these aspects that I mentioned. So. We really hope to bridge geographical scales. So, you know, um, moving from the local up to this global platform and then using the global platform to help sort of, um, you know, uh, 
inform local uh, other local experiences. So um, identifying pilot sites, prioritizing different ones, um, making sure that we have adequate geographical representation because a lot of World Heritage cities are actually in Europe. So um, working to kind of make sure that we have a geographical spread and also a spread looking at um, lots of different climate change impacts. Um, so, you know, air pollution, flooding, desertification, all of the different sort of climate change impacts that threaten um, the wide variety of World Heritage cities and, you know, piloting, refining, and then feeding this global platform. And also um, in terms of, and that, those are kind of like what you see as like the tangible, you know, what we hope to be the tangible outputs of this community activity. Um, and also kind of building on UNESCO's already um, existing indicator set, the Culture 2030 indicator set, um, using what we find out on climate risks and using what we're able to find out on terms of impacts on cultural heritage um, to kind of uh, help inform this set of indicators. So um, also including sustainable development goal indicators as well. So yeah, so as I mentioned, we have this strategic implementation plan. Um, and as such, we kind of briefly talk about sort of a data policy as it's very new. Um, and we're kind of sort of delineating activities as we speak. Um, but we've really tried, we want to, you know, um, make free and open access data priority using it where possible, um, sort of engaging with different um, aspects of the geo community to, to see, you know, can we engage with private sector? Can, what sort of open data is out there? What can we map to um, the needs of the cultural heritage community? Um, but all keeping in mind that there really is sort of a lot of limitations and sensitivity around data for cultural heritage sites and monuments. Um, so UNESCO World Heritage Center is really obviously, you know, aware of this and will ensure that the outputs kind of reach the necessary communities and that we're able to, um, you know, learn from them in terms of what their needs are. Um, but we hope to sort of disseminate through um, open platforms like GEO's um, Knowledge Hub and um, all, you know, sort of keeping in mind and working with local communities as we implement our pilots and um, build this sort of global platform, um, keeping in mind what sensitivities might exist. So because of issues with theft and trafficking of cultural objects and property, dangers related to armed conflict and war, terrorism, et cetera, there are a lot of threats um, that, and this does, obviously doesn't include any of the cli climate change threats, but these sorts of reasons, et cetera, um, kind of dictate what sort of data can be open. Um, so there really are some things to consider here. And as we move forward with specific site and pilot implementation, we'll learn more on sort of like what degree um, this data can be open. But some, that being said, um, you know, some efforts exist that um, obviously provide open data for cultural heritage. So Copernicus did this like wonderful mapping exercise where they looked at Copernicus services in relation to cultural heritage needs um, and really mapped, you know, okay, how can services and data, existing data from this program um, really help either indirectly or directly address um, needs of the cultural heritage community. And then also this open heritage 3D project has um, tried to remove the barriers to accessing accessing and working with um, cultural heritage data. Um, and so they've launched for a couple of cities um, open data that's accessible. And then further on this Copernicus point, um, ECMWF is um, a member of the steering committee um, and consortium of UCO. And so really highlighting that um, the Copernicus sort of data tools um, products, et cetera, can help in measuring specific climate indicators relevant to cultural heritage and in our case, world heritage cities. So there is open data out there. There is, you know, services that can help us in terms of sort of identifying um, and measuring the risks um, in world heritage cities. And so um, as we move forward, we really um, want to see where the first, one of the first steps is kind of this mapping of needs, um, see where open data can kind of address the needs that exist out there. 
um, and help us move forward our thematic priorities, help in terms of standardization. So, um, you know, it really is a global issue. How can things be standardized um, from site to site or city to city and kind of keeping um, that frequency aspect. So keeping everything up to date um, in terms of mapping and um, monitoring of different sites. And then also addressing kind of this affordability aspect, those barriers um, in terms of technical capacity and offering sort of a, a, a global view, which can support global policymaking. And then also contributing to real time sort of emergency management and alerts. So using open EO data like Copernicus services um, to help in, in times of need or, um, you know, maybe there's the option to have real time information informing uh, like a wildfire encroaching on a World Heritage site like in Olympia um, last year. And then there are opportunities for high resolution data for specific sites. And um, we hope to kind of explore this more as our consortium starts to um, meet more frequently with the working groups and kind of outline these pilot cases and um, start to gather information on that. So that is it for me. I don't know if there are any questions, um, but it's kind of hard to see. Feel free to email me um, at any point as well. Hello, Jennifer. Sorry again for the technical problems. I don't know where they came up. Um, yeah, it's, I, I think there's a really interesting uh, topic you're working on and we, we talked a little bit in advance about uh, you've been in Greece and uh, I think that especially here, down here in Greece, cultural heritage is really an important issue here in Greece. Uh, I had the, the experience uh, a, a year before and there are a lot of pl plays involved. Uh, even if you just want to build a house or something like that. So I think it's a really good idea to put that on, 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 on maps and to, to get the people involved who are uh, involved in this, uh, in this topic. Um, my, my question is, um, how is the acceptance of the administrations you're working together with? That, that would be quite interesting for me, probably for listeners as well. Like acceptance in terms of willingness to work together on this project? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so uh, UNESCO World Heritage Center has basically been there since the beginning. Um, so they really, you know, they manage the list of World Heritage Cities and um, uh, they're really excited about this because, um, you know, the 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 brunt of, you know, all this monitoring and management of data and things has been on them um, with sort of, they've acknowledged the need to kind of open up to earth observation data, but, um, you know, there's like some technical issues there. Um, so, I mean, it, it's really open. I mean, we've, we've worked together well. I mean, we'll see when things um, sort of start to develop and become more tangible, like when we are working in local communities for the pilot cases. I don't know what the administrations might be like at that level. Um, but no, I mean, very, like, this is very exciting and it's very interdisciplinary. So you have multiple domains interested in it and wanting to be involved and seeing how they can kind of contribute. And that's really great to hear. Um, I, probably it's, I don't know, it's an, it, it, it could be another issue in, 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 in other countries, but uh, I know that Greeks sometimes tend to be a little bit complicated. I, we have the same in, 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 in Germany as well. And um, just putting on new efforts on, on an old known problem, this is really, really um, thanks for your talk. I'm looking at the question side and I would really to encourage the listeners to, to put another question. We have about four or five minutes left. Uh, put your question on the board or put it on the chat. That would be really great. Maybe we'll wait for another one or two minutes. Maybe it's a quite new 
idea to deal with these problems. So it seems that nobody else has problems, questions on that. But anyway, yeah, really thank you, Jennifer, for the talk. It was, especially for me, it was really, really interesting because I, we, we talked about that before. We built a house here down in Greece last year. And uh, I know you have to talk to a lot of, lot of people and a lot of different uh, positions. So that was really good, good overview. And I think that really could help not only in Greece, but um, yeah. Thank you very much for your talk. Thank you. And uh, have a good day in California. And uh, yeah, again, sorry for the technical issues. I don't know whether it, where, where it really went wrong, but uh, I, I won't no exclude it. It's really on my side. No and uh, but get your kudos on the on the chat and have a nice day. And um, yeah, I hope okay. you enjoyed the the round here. And um, yeah, if you're interested in more talks on phosphor g and stuff like that i think there are a lot of opportunities for everybody to join together although we are all sitting on different places uh, for me now it's um, time to have the evening beer and um, yeah probably see you tomorrow in another session and i'm going to close this one now thank you very much bye bye and have a good night or have a good day or wherever you are. Enjoy your day. Thank you.